Don't call me during the company trip. I'm busy, so I'm hanging up. My husband exclaimed and promptly hung up the phone. I sat there, lost in thought, with a TV playing in the background. The news was sharing that his company had declared bankruptcy. That didn't add up. Bankrupt companies don't go on trips. To add to my confusion, during our brief conversation, I distinctly heard a woman's voice softly calling his name. I wonder who you're traveling with, I whispered to myself. What came next was a roller coaster of events. I'm Marie, a 30-year-old freelance graphic designer, mostly working from my cozy home. I tied the knot with Kent two years ago, and we've set up our nest in an apartment. I'm pretty chill, and not the kind to be constantly on the move. In fact, since my childhood days, I've always dreamt of a career that lets me set my rhythm. Given my passion for computers, I decided to dive into graphic design. My career is on the up and up, and personally, life's good too. But here's the catch. Things between Kent and me have hit a rough patch. Post-marriage, it came to light that he leans a bit towards the lazy side and can be self-centered, which has stirred the pot quite a few times. Back when I was more career-driven, romance wasn't on my radar. My folks never pushed the marriage agenda on me, and since my younger brothers happily married with kids, they felt content. I never bought into the whole marriage is the pinnacle of joy for women concept. There's so much more to life. Concerned for my single status, my friends decided to pull me into a mixer. Not wanting to blow them off and a tad curious, I showed up. That's where I bumped into Kent. He was the life of the party and super easy to chat with. Given it was my first mixer and I was jittery, it felt good to talk to him. Fast forward, we clicked, swapped numbers, and the rest is history. My friends thought I hit the jackpot because he was with a big shot company, raking in the big bucks. Lots of ladies had their eyes on him. Our days together were a blast and things moved pretty fast. We were a year in when he popped the question, and I said yes. The honeymoon phase was dreamy, but then reality hit. Sure, he's with a prestigious firm, but he's not thrilled about it. He's all about making a quick buck and kicking back. I've lost count of how many times I've heard him rant. It works just too much. Networking, guiding the newbies, and oh, endless socializing. I mean, the pay is great, but why did I get myself into this? At least I can splurge however I want. Now I adore my job, but prefer to keep things low-key socially, so I get where he's coming from. But the man loves to burn cash. Spoiler alert, I'm actually pulling in more cash freelancing now. I've been chipping in more for our day-to-day -day expenses while he's busy pampering himself. I've tried getting him on board with saving, especially with the economy going downhill, but he's like a broken record. I'll start saving. Someday. I mean, think about it. What if we can't have fun when we're old and frail? Wouldn't that be a waste? I once wondered if this spendthrift mindset was because we didn't have kids. When I broached the subject, he was all, Of course I want kids. But if that's the plan, we should be socking away more cash. Every time I bring it up, he's evasive. He can't make up his mind to save his life. And don't even get me started on housework. From laundry and dishes to cleaning and trash duty, guess who's on it? Me. I've tried getting him to pitch in, but it's always half-baked. And if I call him out? Enough with the lectures. It's easy for you working from home. You've got all the time, so just deal with it. I've thrown in the towel, trying to get him to lend a hand. It only adds fuel to the fire, so I take care of everything. My patience with him is wearing thin. Lately, something's off. For a guy who's not that into his job, he's been clocking in a ton of OT and even working weekends. He'd occasionally drop a text saying he's bunking at the office and to skip dinner for him. I've tried getting a heads up, but he's always non-committal. Hey, if you're going to be at work late, give me a heads up. It's frustrating finding out after I've cooked dinner. Feels like I'm just wasting food. He shot back with some hand waving. I get it, my bad. But the company's been on a roll lately, and I keep getting tasks thrown at me out of nowhere. Turning them down doesn't look great to the boss. Just hang in there with me, alright? The company's doing better? Funny, I haven't noticed an uptick in your overtime, or weekend pay. Not everything shows up right away. You'll see the perks down the road. Trust me, with the way our company's going, bonuses are bound to get bigger. His explanation sounded somewhat plausible, but there was something off in his eyes. A quick online search of his company didn't turn up any news about a financial boost. There's something else going on with him. 
He typically steers clear of company parties and trips, saying he's not into the whole social scene. On the rare occasions he'd go, he'd come back in a foul mood, but recently he's been hitting up more of these events. When I asked him about the change of heart, he just said he started to enjoy them. I'd be cool with him going out more if it weren't for the sly smile he's been sporting at these events. And get this, he's suddenly into dressing sharp. It used to be he'd wear anything as long as it was comfy. Now he's all about the pricey threads, saying it's not professional to dress all casual. Since when? Also, every time his phone rings lately, he makes a beeline for his room or the bathroom. If I mention he could just answer it there, he brushes it off saying it's a big work call. How many big work calls can one guy have? I'm starting to think he's keeping something from me, and my suspicions would soon be confirmed in the worst way possible. One day, Kent was all jazzed up, talking about his week-long company trip. I found his excitement a bit odd, especially when I found out the trip was far enough to need a plane ride. A whole week? That's quite the getaway. When did your company start going all out on trips? He defended. Look, we're a big deal in our industry. Business has been booming, so they're treating us. Think of it as a chance to blow off some steam. I'm planning on making the most of it, so try not to blow up my phone, okay? His voice kind of ticked me off, like he was warning me to back off. It's not like I've ever given him a hard time about going away. Things used to be great between us, but lately he's been getting on my last nerve. As he got more and more excited about this trip, I felt more and more down. The day after he took off, I was just chilling with my morning coffee and the news when the anchor dropped a bombshell. Up next, major company XX just filed for bankruptcy. No way. This can't be happening. I had good reason to freak. The company going under was where Kent worked. The report went on about how they'd been in hot water financially for a bit and one bad project sent them over the edge. I was floored. If that's true, then what's this whole trip Kent's on about? I tried to ring him, but no dice. A few hours later, one of his buddies from work stopped by. I knew the guy. He'd dropped Kent off a few times when he'd had one too many at those company parties. He looked pretty rattled when he asked. Is Kent there? We have an emergency meeting about the company going under and I can't get a hold of Kent. He's gotta be home, right? Startled, I replied. Hold on. What do you mean he's home? He told me he's on a company trip. Company trip? There's no way we're affording that right now. Kent said he was taking time off because you weren't feeling well. It hit me that something was up, so I quickly turned on my phone's speaker and hit record. After a bunch of tries, I finally got my husband on the line. He snapped. Why are you blowing up my phone? Can't you take a hint after one missed call? Just listen, we need to talk. Seriously, where are you? What? I told you I'm on the company trip. I'm having a blast, so don't kill my vibe. Hold on, I'm busy, so I gotta go. We'll chat when I'm back. Before he hung up, though, I heard a woman's voice in the background calling his name. Not exactly the sound of a company trip. His buddy next to me looked as shell-shocked as I felt. He told me the only folks they couldn't get in touch with were Kent and one of the office admins. Turns out she took time off the same days as Kent, saying it was for personal stuff. Everything clicked. Holding my phone so tight, I thought it might crack. I couldn't even muster a reply to his concerned, You good? All I was thinking was how I'd make him regret this. A few days later, Kent rang me up, sounding pretty freaked out. Why is the place empty? Like, where's the fridge? The furniture? Even the microwave. Where the heck are you? That's all my stuff. Most of the stuff in our place was stuff I bought. He has some stuff from back in his bachelor days, but it was old and always breaking down. Every time I said we should get new stuff, he'd be all, It still works, no need to spend more. Eventually I got tired of the junk and just bought new stuff myself. To his freak out, I shot back. Took you long enough to notice. Whatever I do with my stuff is up to me. By the way, hope you had a fun trip. Don't sweat getting me anything. Forget the trip. And it's not just your stuff. What's with the divorce papers on the table? What's going on? Isn't it obvious? Or are you that dense? I mean, you've always kind of been. Lying about a company trip to cheat? Really? He was caught off guard, then stammered out. What? How? I filled him in the whole company going broke and what his co-worker told me. I also let him know his co-worker heard our conversation on speaker. He still tried to dodge the affair, saying there was no proof. I couldn't believe he was still trying to play dumb. I set him straight. Rita, 
Is that the woman you cheated with? Someone four years younger? And she works at your office, right? Whoa, hold up. How do you know about Rita? One of our co-workers spilled the beans. Plus, you guys aren't exactly low-key on social media. Luckily, finding proof of the affair was a breeze. I knew about his online profiles, but kept my distance out of respect. But this? Game changer. I didn't owe him any courses anymore. Sure enough, scrolling through his posts, there were a bunch of cozy pics with a woman. He called her his wife in the captions, but that definitely wasn't me. Digging a bit, I found what seemed to be Rita's profile. Yep, there he was in her posts too. It wasn't hard to spot him, thanks to a distinct mole and that custom watch he always wears. Funny enough, while he was playing house with her online, she labeled him as just another fling. And from the looks of it, she had a few guys on the side. He was just another notch on her belt. I told him we'd hash out the divorce details through lawyers. That's when it really hit him. Wait, I don't want a divorce, he blurted. I promise I won't do it again. You mean everything to me. Is one slip-up really worth ending it all? Seriously? You thought that'll fly after you cheated? But our company's tanking. I might be jobless soon. If I hit rock bottom, who'll have my back? Hear him say that, my patience snapped. He wasn't sorry about cheating. He just wanted a safety net because of the storm he saw coming. You've got to be kidding. Grow up. You're lazy, you cheat, and you lie nonstop. I don't need a deadbeat 40-year-old hanging around. Get ready for the divorce. And yeah, expect to pay up. He broke down, but I was done and hung up. We ended up getting divorced, and both he and Rita had to pay me a pretty penny. Now I'm living it up in my own place and loving every second. A couple of weeks after the dust settled, I bumped into one of Kent's old work buddies. Got a little update on the gossip train. Turns out the company after some major changes is still around but under a new name. But Kent and Rita, with their little secret out in the open, were among the first to get the boot. He's been hitting the job market hard, but it's tough out there and he's striking out left and right. Plus, with his family cutting ties, he's out in the cold. Someone said they saw him cleaning bathrooms at a train station. As for Rita, her little black book of flings, including some other married dudes, seems to have blown up in her face. But hey, not my circus, not my monkeys. I'm soaking up the single life and thinking I'll sit out the marriage game for a bit.